Welcome to this video. We are first day back from the deload. I just took four days fully off, and I gotta say, they were fucking rough. Um, I trained like really hard the last day before the deload because I knew I was deloading, like I knew I was gonna have four days off, and I had just fucking deloaded like two weeks before that. Um, just because I felt so shitty. So I was like, okay, you know, two deloads in the span of like one month, that's a lot. Let's really push the envelope. That was a bad idea. I felt so fucking depressed, just like so mentally ill for the first fucking three days. Yesterday wasn't so bad, but Josh was over here yesterday and like I was falling asleep like middle of the day. Yeah, you needed a nap. I was fucking tired. So anyway, um, Four days off, feel a little bit better today. Um, you know, good enough to film a video and hopefully be entertaining. But uh, yeah, first day back in the gym today. Not gonna push it super hard. Um, just kinda wanna be reasonable and stuff like that. Got my blood test done yesterday, um, which is the reason that I took this deload because I think I mentioned in my last video or one of my last videos that you should take a couple days off before you get your bloods done just because Muscle damage from training can elevate certain enzymes and then you can get some false, you know, values or some artificially inflated values. So, but yeah, did that. Got my bloods done yesterday. Should have my blood work back pretty soon. And then I think I'm getting blood work done again when I am in Columbus for the Arnold because I'm going to the Arnold again this year. So hopefully I will have some content for that. But yeah, today, first day back, back day. I'm excited to train again. I've been sitting on my ass feeling like a fucking depressed loser for the last four days, so. We want me to be energetic for the vlog. Can't be having boring black pilled Evan. Nobody likes boring, depressed black pilled Evan. Even Evan doesn't like that Evan. But I'm trying to keep my caffeine intake like reasonable. And with all the fucking issues I've had with my recovery lately, it doesn't make sense to like red line my nervous system with like 500 milligrams of stims and then train harder than I should and fuck my sleep up, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of boring, but I think that's the mature decision is to be more moderate with my approach. So uh, I've been starting to take L-carnitine lately and L-carnitine does two things. Um, the first thing is that it's basically a transporter of um, things that the mitochondria of the cell use for energy. So it is kind of the way that like insulin helps transport things around the body, helps transport you know nutrients around the body. Um, L-carnitine is one of the things that helps transport things through just like within the cell into the mitochondria. I'm pretty sure. I know it definitely helps mobilize fatty acids um, in order to use those for energy, for the cell energy. But the other thing that it does is it increases the density of the androgen receptors. Um, so you have androgen receptors around your body. That's what androgens like testosterone and DHT, those are both examples of androgens. Um, they bind to those receptors and elicit muscle growth. That's you know why when people take testosterone, um, they have higher levels of androgen so they gain more muscle. So L-carnitine just helps increase the density of the androgen receptors. So you don't get more androgen receptors because everyone's born with like a fixed amount of androgen receptors, but the density of the androgen receptor is increased. So you're, I'm not really sure exactly how that like mechanistically translates or how to kind of visualize that. Um, but I recently listened to a podcast with Dr. Kyle Gillette and again, Andrew Huberman, the goat. Um, and then they were just talking about, yeah, how the uh, L-carnitine increases the density of of the receptors of the androgen receptors. So I take this now. Um, it's obviously Gorilla Mind supplement, code Evan. You already know that though. Um, but the other thing too is that L carnitine, when it's digested um, in the gut, it can produce TMAO, which is a potential carcinogen. So in order to neutralize that, we take it with garlic. So garlic has a, like an ingredient in it or some type of something in it, I don't really know. Ingredient 
molecule, chemical, whatever, called allicin. And allicin neutralizes the TMAO in the gut when you consume L-carnitine. Um, so L-carnitine itself doesn't like have TMAO in it. It's just that when you ingest L-carnitine, the process by like digesting it in like the stomach produces TMAO kind of as like a byproduct. And so does um, anything with alpha GPC. So Respawn has alpha GPC in it. And so does Gorilla Mind Smooth. So when I take Respawn and or Gorilla Mind Smooth, I also take garlic with it. Just to kind of be safe, you know what I mean? Neutralize the potential carcinogens that might come from that. But that's being just kind of like extra cautious. I know that some people don't have, they can take tons of alpha GPC and tons of uh, L-carnitine and stuff like that and have no TMAO in their blood panels at all. So it kind of depends on, on the microbiome, like the gut biome of the individual, but just to be safe, take some garlic with it. I'm all fucking strapped up. Strapped up like a lesbian on Pornhub. See you, boss. See you, boss. Old depressing days without a pump. <laughs> Quick, to the shitmobile. So starting with calves today, I'm gonna to do one set seated, one set standing. Seated is going to obviously train short in position um, and help me get a little bit further into um, my end range um, in the bottom position, just because I'm gonna have more room because my leg's not straight. And when your leg's straight, that lengthens the gas rock, which, because the gas rock attaches at the knee. Uh, big thing with this is obviously really slow on the way down. Um, and pause in the bottom. So you'll notice like I go really slow on the way down to make sure that I'm not bouncing off my Achilles tendon because the Achilles tendon is a very, very thick tendon in the body. It's, I think it's the thickest one. So it has a ton of um, elastic reflex. So if you wanna train the muscle rather than the tendon, you wanna make sure you go all the way to the bottom and eliminate the elastic reflex entirely or the stretch reflex. And then I'm pushing off of uh, that right there. So if you want to bias the inside of your calf, you want to push off of this part of your foot. So I'm actively fighting to like put the pressure on the inside of my foot and then push from there. So so a standing calf raise, uh, the gas rock, the uh, muscle fibers extend to the lower limb of the length tension relationship, uh, which basically just means that they experience a ton of passive tension when they're in a the very lengthened position. So standing calf raise because the gas rock connects at the knee and at the ankle. Um, that's gonna be the most lengthened position for the gas rock. So we really wanna make sure that we're spending a ton of time in the lengthened position, um, which means pausing in the bottom for a long period of time and really for the same same reasons as with the seated calf raise, slow on the way down to take the Achilles tendon out of it. Um, and yeah, with these especially, you wanna keep your leg really straight at the knee just so that we can lengthen that gas rock as much as we can because it's gonna experience so much passive tension um, in the lengthened position, which means more tension overall, more gains. Okay, so I don't think I have to talk about this very much because I always talk about it. We're doing line cable wire raise. Uh, probably my favorite delt movement just because it's so easy to line up with like however your shoulders move comfortably. So big thing to remember with this is just we want to fight to keep our scaps down the entire time. Raising an arm path where you feel it in the side delt and the lower trap the most. And then the other thing too is if you want more lower trap, you raise these higher because that's going to bias the resistance profile to be harder, closer to the top. And if you want less lower trap and more delt, you're gonna bring them a little bit lower. But in general, you want them roughly a foot to two feet above like your chest height when you're laying on the bench. The 
Just doing a couple extra reps in the lengthen position with my smaller delt. This asymmetry is driving me fucking nuts. Alrighty, so T-bar row. There's not really much to say about this. Um, if you watch my how to grow meat shield back video, which is a couple videos ago, then I go over the T-bar in a little bit more detail. So go watch that video. But basically we're looking for Oh, wide arm path, so instead of, I don't want to be doing this, I want to be doing this, and at the bottom, I want to really get that stretch between my shoulder blades. So I'm not gonna like fold over the top, but you want to fold a little bit over it. And then we want to make sure that we're not reefing our lower back and like ripping our chest off the pad just to build momentum. So you, when you see me do it, you'll, you want to do a little bit of that, but in general, you want to just be using the chest support for what it's made for, which is just to prevent your body from moving forward. Because if I pull like this, if I pull like this, it's actually at the same time pulling my body forward, right? So the chest support prevents me from going forward. So you just want it to look like that. You don't want it, you don't want it to look like this. You just want it to look like that. So good uh, overall upper back, rear delts, traps, movement. And that's why we're starting today off with the Chiba Road. All right, so we just did a thickness movement. Now we're moving to kind of a hybrid between a width and a thickness movement. It's an upper back focus pull down. It's still gonna hit lats. I know there's a bunch of fucking drama out there right now between whether or not a pull down can be upper back focus, but if I'm leaning backward and I'm getting a ton of scapular protraction and retraction, that's gonna train a lot of the lower trap and mid trap, and I'm gonna get obviously a lot of rear delts, and then carries and lats are gonna work with this regardless. So it's gonna hit almost everything except for like upper traps, so it's a great whole body movement, and that's what I'm doing now. That's kind of my segue or transition between the thickness based movement, which is a T-bar row, into my like purely lat focus work. So now we're gonna hit this. So with this movement, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my spine neutral. So I'm not gonna like, you, you don't wanna keep a proud chest. You wanna keep your spine neutral and lean back, but lean back at the hips. And then that way your shoulder blades and arms kind of move, move around your rib cage. So I'll show you what I mean. Instead of being like this, and like arching the shit out of my back, I'm gonna turn my abs on and keep my back, I'm, see it, I'm leaning back at the hips as opposed to at the spine. And then I'm keeping my rib cage, my spine stable in this position and pulling around it. So obviously the lat pull down that I just did is like I said, going to incorporate the lats. This is gonna train the lats in a slightly different way and isolate them a little bit more. So 
the way that I set this up, this is called the, well, I don't know what it's called, but I call it the Gloff pull down because Nick Gloff, who is my coach, is the first one to show it to me. I don't know who he got it from. I don't fucking care. It doesn't matter. Uh, so the side of the bench that you are on is opposite to the side that you're using your arm on, right? So I'm pulling with my left arm, but I'm on the right side of the seat, right? Then my left leg is forward. So left arm working, left leg forward, but I'm on the right side of the bench. Drive your knee underneath of the pad. And then if you need to, you can do a little calf raise to push up into the pad more, which is gonna create more stability. I'm also sitting, like I'm making contact. Hopefully you can hear me with this thing. I'm making contact with the seat all along, all along my leg here. Then I pull, get set. I wanna keep my shoulder blade down, not back, but down. Lean back, so you wanna extend at the spine a little bit, just so that I'm not like, right underneath of it. You wanna be leaned back a little bit. Grab something with your other hand and then drive your elbow to the floor. So a lot of people will do this and they'll do this and they'll let their shoulder come forward. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep our shoulder blade down, like I said, and drive our elbow to the floor and then continue to shove our shoulder blade down with our elbow at the same time at the bottom. Generally, I like to keep like a, an underhand grip or a slightly neutral but mostly underhand grip as I'm doing here. And then the last thing I'll say is you only want to go so far that your shoulder doesn't come up. As soon as I go so far that my shoulder comes out, that means I've gone too far. And then the tension's not on the lat anymore. So, set up the way that I already described. Get a little bit of a proud chest so that your lat has better leverage and you're not pulling like directly from over top. You're pulling a little bit more like this. And then lock yourself in. Pull hard with your opposite hand to keep yourself stable and drive with your elbow. You don't want to pull with your bicep, and you don't want to pull, you don't want to let your shoulder shrug up and let your arm rotate, like your shoulder rotate forward. You want to keep everything down, and we want to think everything, elbow, shoulder, hand, everything, down and slightly back, so that kind of thing. You know you need a fix when you fall down. You know you need to find a way through another day Let me be the one to numb you out Let me be the one to hold you Never gonna let you get away The shoulder you cry on The toast that you die on So desperately You know I'll give you one for free Forever you're coming back to me